What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the video, make sure you leave a comment. Got a guest on today that I think many people find intriguing. You know, he was sentenced to, I believe, life in prison, did a bunch of time, ends up making it out, but he could tell his story better than I can. Unique Mecca Audio. Unique, tell the people who you are, where you're from, and talk a little bit about you, brother. Uh, my name is Unique Mech Audio, man. I'm from Harlem, you know. Um, I got a YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is, is similar to uh, Chad's channel. You know, we push positive content. We try and reach the people with positive information. I'm not into the negative stuff. And, uh, you know, just so you know who I am, um, you know, I'm from Harlem. I got locked up for life plus 20. I did 26 years in uh, in the feds, you know. Um, they got me for selling 25 kilos a day up in Washington Heights, you know what I mean? And, you know, doing my thing down in Harlem. I had a club called Club 2000. I had a record store and studio called Mecca Audio. Um, they, they had me on the Fed magazine while I was locked up where we just talked about the club. I didn't get into my lifestyle because Chad already know, because he's a paralegal, that I couldn't speak on all that in order to get out. So that's why a lot of people don't know who I am because I had to keep quiet for 26 years. You know what I mean? But now that I'm out, I'm making around and I'm trying to reach out to the youth because there was nobody there to try and save me. You understand what I'm saying? When I was doing my thing, so I'm trying to be here to save them. You know what I mean? So um, I tell the little prison stories where I let them know, the, you know, the, 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 the wildness and madness that I've been in and experienced and the different things that, I, you know, I've went through, you know, in the BOP so that the youth don't think that prison is fun, prison is glamorous, so none of that. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, they think that everything is good, like they can just do what they want to do. Oh, I go to jail, I can handle it. And I let them know that I did 26 years in prison for poisoning my community. I'm not proud of it. I don't be glorifying it. I just speak about it so that, you know, you, the viewers, know my credentials, that I'm qualified to speak. You know what I mean? So, you know, nobody wants to hear a, a, a plumber, you know what I mean, trying to tell you how to be a mechanic. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why I let you know that, you know, I'm from the street. I am the street, you know, and I do me, man. And I'm here with Chad. We chilling. We get ready to uh, walk the yard. You know what I mean? I got a book out called The Roaring Harlem. You know what I mean? You know, that's the shirt that I'm wearing. Just so you know, the book is bananas. It's basically loose on my life. I mean, you know, you know, it is what it is. Let's buy it, Chad. You know, that's enough. I want to ask you this. You know, how old were you when you got arrested? Oh, uh, I was 28, 29. 28, 29 years I got old. in December. I was 29. I was 20. mm -hmm. 28, 29 yes. years old. You're looking at a life sentence. You're going to prison for the rest of your life. At least that's what the feds are talking about. Eventually, you get sentenced to life plus 20. What was it like for a young man to be sentenced that kind of time, brother? I knew that I was going to go to prison one day because, I mean... I'm selling drugs up and down the East Coast from New York to D.C., Virginia, North Carolina. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I was raised a criminal. You know what I mean? I was raised a criminal, so I already knew that, you know, all good things come to an end. I just, a life sentence. You know what I mean? For a little 10 years, 15 years, I can knock that out. That's what my mentality was at 29. You understand what I'm saying? I'll be out by 40. But the judge hit the gavel and said life plus 20. You know what I mean? And, you know. It, it, when he asked me if I had anything to say, because you know, Chad, when you're getting sentenced, they ask you if you got anything to say for leniency. You understand what I'm saying? They had me for 330 keys, man. You know what I mean? The prosecutor talk, said he cut it down to 255 like that to make a difference. Either way, that's life all the way across the board. I was a level 50, category 6, so I know I'm getting life. You know what I mean? There's no doubt about it I'm getting life. I already read the Busted by the Feds. Remember, we all read that. You know what I mean? And, uh, I know I'm getting life, so I, I didn't go in there groveling and, you know, none of that. I already was putting a plan together how to get out. You understand what I'm saying? So my, I, I, I saw that I was a level 50 and level 42 is life all the way across the board. So I'm eight points over the joint. Judge can't do nothing for me. He asked me if I got something to say, you know, uh, for him to give me less time. You understand? So I told him straight up, you know what I mean? Uh, oh, then he also said that uh, he know that I wasn't bringing the drugs in, so... He, you know, I could help myself if I tell him where I was getting the drugs from, this and that, and, you know, all that crap. And, you know, that wasn't even an option or a thought. So, you know, I basically told him straight up, just send me someplace so I can further my education. 
So in case something come down the pipe 20, 30 years from now, uh, I could go home and be a you know productive citizen and a better you know man to my family. You know what I mean? And that's when he sent me to Lewisburg. You know what I'm saying? Lewisburg. What was it like, man, walking into Lewisburg? Young man, I know they had a bunch of things going on over there. Were you over there when all that AB shit was going on with the DC dudes? Or was that before your time? No, no, I, but, uh, when that went on, that was 96. I was already in ADX. I went to ADX for um for the uh, crack law ride. You know what I mean? They you know, they said I set the crack law ride over over an hour block and uh you know, they, they sent me to ADX. Because I remember when they came up there for that, right after I came, because I was one of the first ones to open up ADX. Me, uh, Bernard Goins, Big B from Chicago, if anybody know where he at that's watching this, tell him, get at me, good brother. You know, GD out of Chicago, one of my first, you know, good men that gave me good mentoring. Uh, Nathaniel Appleby, if y'all know where these men are, they home now because, you know, they, you know. But these are the brothers that already had 10 years in when I only had 12, 14 months in. So they was telling me that I was too wild. I had to calm down or I'd never get out. And I and Chad, I couldn't read or write when I went in. You understand what I'm saying? So going in, not being able to read and write and, you know, made millions of dollars on the streets. It, it's like, it, it, it's like, I was, I was, I'm trying to give you the best words. You know what I mean? I'm giving you a real interview. You know what I mean? So bear with me if I pause, because you know I like to talk. But when I pause, <laughs> I'm thinking. All it's right? all good. But, you know, these are brothers that told me that, you know, only way to get out of prison is to program with my record. You know what I mean? And, you know, my, my um and, and my conduct, especially after, you know, you know, dealing with the police and all that, getting sent to ADX. So I wound up taking my GED and they got on the GED thing. They had on there the TV in the cell, a little 13 inch TV. And I took my GED on the joint. You know what I mean? And, you know, I just watched it every day. Still can't really write. That's why even though I got a book out, I don't really do too much signing of the book because I'm not I'm not at all proud of my handwriting. And, um, you know, and I got a real complex about it. So I, I haven't even tried to even learn it. But my, my reading and my comprehension, my comprehension have always been immaculate. I picked up my reading skills and, you know, I did what I had to do. But, you know, walking into Lewisburg, man, it was like Lewisburg was it was at this time. This was in. October 1994. So the crack law was just kicking in, Chad. You remember them days. So when that kicked in, they were sending everybody from the East Coast, you know what I mean, straight to Lewisburg. If you was a kingpin and you had these type of charges, you understand what I'm saying? And then uh, they were sending brothers from the West Coast, from like Lump Park and all of that. Because at this time, I don't think Beaumont wasn't even open yet. They were sending people from Lump Park that messed up the California brothers over to uh, Lewisburg. But it was it was straight gladiators, man. My first day there was a murder. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I, I never experienced nothing like that, nor expected to experience anything like that. It, it was, you know what I mean? But, you know, I, I, I you know, first thing my, the, the brothers did, big shout out to doo -wop. They just did a documentary on them from Harlem. Ginger just did a documentary on them. Um, I'm going to let y'all see Ginger in a minute. You know what I mean? I did a documentary on them, but doo -wop gave me my first care package. You understand what I'm saying? And, um... You know, another brother, I ain't going to say his name, gave me my first knife. But that's the first thing they give you is a kid package and a knife back then. You know what I mean? So you can eat and you can protect yourself. Let me ask you this. Was it racially segregated back then? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Because when I got there in 94, um, you know, I mean, don't take it offensive. I, I know I know you're not, but I don't want the viewers to take it offensive. But, you know, um, so when I say uh, uh, white boys, I don't want to say European and I'm not being disrespectful in any way. But the white guys, they was the ones that had the drugs in there at the time because that, that was like the Aryan Brotherhood and the police that was there bringing it in, bringing in the drugs was bringing it in for the white guys because they was from the Pennsylvania rural white area. So we had to get the drugs from them. You understand what I'm saying? So they stayed in their lane and they was very racist. Let's not get that twisted. You know what I mean? Because you already know, like you asked me about you know, the um, the murder, you know, um, in 1996. But, you know, the white guys was, you know, they had the drugs back then, man, because there wasn't a lot of black guys in there. And we didn't even know the police because we in the, you know, in, in the boondocks in, in Pennsylvania, right next to Amish County. When you when they drive you in on the bus, you see the horse and buggy and, you know, <laughs> the women and the young girls dressing with the little bonnets like, you know, they own little house on the prairie. And, you know, they, you know. I mean, it it, 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 it it was crazy, man. That's when I knew, like, I'm entering into a whole new world coming out of New York City, 
you know what I mean? Atlanta, North Carolina, you know, uh, Virginia Beach, where everything was more modern and up to date. You know, it was crazy. You know what I mean? What's some of the wildest things you've seen over there as a young man? See anybody get killed in Lewisburg? Lewisburg yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, like that movie theater. You ever been to Lewisburg, Chad? Only through transit. Oh, okay. Well, on the compound, they got a real movie theater. It's an old jail and they got a movie theater. And that's where all the, you know, when they, they show big, like I saw uh, Jason lyrics in there that was out back then. And that's where they showed the movies in a real movie theater, but it was all cement with wooden benches like in an old church, you know? But everybody went in there to smoke weed, drink wine, shoot dope, you know what I mean? They did that. They thing, or even go down the stairs. That's where everybody that had the beast with each other would get into each other. So, like I said, my first I saw the murder when I first got there. You know, I saw one of the homies coming out of the stairs, get his face ripped open. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, locked up. Um, he didn't get locked up a week later. You know what I mean? He got back the dude that ripped him. You understand what I'm saying? That was the norm there. You know what I mean? I seen the homie was fighting with another um, homie in, uh, in one of the dorm. Dude wanted to watch soap operas all day. You know what I mean? And nobody wanted to beef with him, so they just let him do him. But, you know, one of the uh, man went to put it on soccer because the dude left and there was nobody in there. But he figured everybody knew at one o'clock is when he watched. You understand what I'm saying? So, which he does every day. You know what I mean? But we're talking about soap operas. You had a lot of men that was watching the soap operas then. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the Jamaican dude changed the channel and the dude went said something to him and the Jamaican dude hooked off on him. The, the dude went to fight and he spit out a razor blade and chopped him all up on his back. Dude fighting, fighting, fighting. And didn't even realize that he's, he's loose blood because he's hitting him with a razor blade. The razor blade is literally, a, you know, the little single edge uh, joint. You know what I mean? And he hitting him with it and he busy fighting and fighting. And by the time the blood came out, you know what I mean? It was a pool of blood on the ground and he just collapsed right there because he lost so much blood because he was bleeding out from still fighting. And all the dude that was cutting him did was just hold him because he knew he couldn't beat him. So he just held him and just kept chopping him off, chopping him off, chopping him off. I mean, that joint is just crazy, man. You know what I mean? It, 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 it was a madhouse there, man. It was a madhouse, you know? You end up going. House, man. You end up going to the ADX over the crack rides. Tell the people why that took off and, and what happened. Yes, I went to the um, I went to ADX over the crack ride. Let's talk about that though. Let's talk about why the why the crack ride happened. Tell the people because people like crack ride people that don't know the system they don't know what we're talking about. They you know they they were okay. Well, okay, but that's when America was in its in its most. You know, I'm um, trying to find the right word. It was in this, it, it was America was was ready to explode with racism. We're talking about when Farrakhan had the Nation of Islam. You know, um, coming from the '80s when the black people was wearing, you know, we was wearing, uh, you know, the black power medallions, the leather medallions with the black fists, and you know, the red, black, and green, and you know, all that movement was going on in America. And Farrakhan had a big following. Farrakhan called a Million Man March in um washington dc for october um 15th and at that same time 616 um 19 um 94 and uh, 1995 and at that same time is when oj simpson just got acquitted you know what i mean that's then uh this one of the homies hold on i'm gonna bring him in anyway because this is good this one of prison homies let you know the homies be calling you he will not be charged for this call this call is from you know, this call will be recorded and subject to monitoring at any time. This official OG here. Call, you know what I mean? So you're getting blessed with this. Now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, what happened, sir? Yeah, yeah, me get it. Me, I'll do an interview right now. So, you know, um, you were saying that they, they, they did a video on your case and didn't tell you, right? We on YouTube now, son. Yeah. Well, tell them what the name of your case is. What's the point of the Klan case? You know that, man. Now, I don't know. I told you on YouTube. They they don't know that. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 yeah, we got to do a live yeah, thing, though. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? I mean, the point of the Klan case, you also, you know, they, um, actually, the feds labeled us that because of so many um, casualties in the course of, uh, you know, doing whatever we was doing and everything like that. But, you know, it was a superior superficial, you know, surviving and everything. Supposed to be done, you know. We always implemented principles and morals and everything we did. 
years now, so we've been in here since we were younger. We've matured and grown while I was in prison, you know, and prison isn't what it used to be when we first came. It's a whole different animal right now, man. You know, we're confined, you know, we be being oppressed. Those who don't get oppressed are sent by the system and the people who govern us here. So right now, I'm just trying to litigate, man, and get out there, man, so I could implement some change out there so the youngsters can know, man, that hey, that life is ain't about what they think it's about, man. It's a lot of consequences to be detrimental to one's health when you're dealing with that type of life, especially in the street level, you know, so, you know, for your life, it's for your life, you're there for the life. Yeah, yeah, me there for the life, so may I call you back, then we'll prove the thing so everything good, come here, uh, give me about that, oh, all right? All right. Yes, I am, bless up. <laughs> Uh, this is definitely a different interview. So the people that are tuned in, man, I mean, you know, hey, it is what it is. It's real and it's let raw. Know that it's all the way real. I ain't forget the brothers on the inside. You know, these are brothers that I mean, you know, they, they these are the wildest of the wildest. And as they come home, I bring them on my channel because I want y'all to hear from the real what y'all call gangsters. You know what I mean? They talking about them, don't know they getting ready to come, but they coming. You know what I mean? Because like I said, it, it took us decade. It took us a decade or so to really settle down and buckle down and try and, you know, get our lives together because we went in as kids, man. You know what I mean, Chad? We went in as kids, man. So the first thing you want to do is get a knife and, you know, you don't even believe that you're in there and you don't even believe that you're going to do all that time. But after a decade and motions getting turned down and you know how that thing go, all the motions you done filed, it's like reality set in like, man, these people expect me to die in this joint, man. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, the brothers call me all the time, you know, I, I do what I can for them from out here because, you know, um, it, it is what it is, man. You know, I don't forget the good brothers, you know. I hear you, man. That's what's up, man. You always keep your ear to the, you know, to the inside. And, man, I, I do it every day, brother. I try to help people every day get out of prison. You know, and I don't, you know, I've said this before. I'm the person that wrote the first compassionate release motion in the country. I wrote the Conrado Can 2 case. And since then, thousands and thousands of people have gotten out of prison. But more, you know, more back to you, man. The crack riots, the laws have changed. People okay, are like, yo, okay. go ahead. I remember where I left off at. All right, yeah. It was it, it was the Million Man March. Then they was doing the the uh, the, the, one to, uh, the 100 to 1 ratio, you know, crack law vote. So when the crack law vote came down, that's because if you got caught with, uh, with one gram of, of, of crack cocaine, which is like, you know, literally this much. You know what I mean? You had to get caught with 100 grams, like this much, in order to get the same amount of time as one little gram, when all that is is a hit that the dude throw in the pipe. You understand what I'm saying? But they knew that the, 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 the blacks was the ones that was handling the crack, selling the crack, dealing with the crack and all of that. So they gave us, you know, 100 times more for powder because it was the white people that was dealing with, I mean, for crack. It was the white people that was dealing with the powder. So it's like we go to court, you know what I mean? Because you get caught with, you know, a gram of coke and, you know, you're looking at 10 years, you know what I mean? Where they got to get caught with a big ass bag like this, you know, to look at the same amount of time. So when they ruled on it and they denied it, you know what I mean? Um, first, I'm giving you an exclusive because, like I said, I was there. First jail to go up was um, uh, Greenville, Illinois, you know what I mean? Greenville, Illinois had their little riot. Then Talladega had their riot. These was FCIs because these are the people that affected. This didn't affect us in the penitentiaries. You understand what I'm saying? Because I got 255 keys. You know what I mean? So even if they drop it 1,000 to 1, I still got life. You know what I mean? For the amount of drugs. But the fight wasn't about me. The fight was for my people. You understand what I'm saying? So it was on the strength that, you know, so many of, you know, my comrades that was around me was affected by it that, you know, when it first jumped off, Lewisburg wasn't even in none of that. We was never really involved in the crack riot because we knew we had too much time. So the FCIs was going on, but Janet Reno ordered all the jails locked down. You understand what I'm saying? All the jails in America, they shut the doors at one time. First time they ever did that in American history was for that crack law. And that was the biggest mistake she made. Because now you, you put everybody in their cage to think and realize that they never going home. Washington ain't helping. Ain't nobody helping. And... You know, when you out moving around before they lock the doors, your mind is not really on that because you go to lift up the weight pile, you go to movie theater, you, they got they had pool tables in Lewisburg then, ping pong table, foosball, they showed movies uh, two, three times a day. They try to keep our minds occupied. But when Janet Reno said lock the jail down, all hell broke loose, my nigga, because now we sitting in there and we thinking, damn. And you got a bunch of dudes, right? You got a bunch of dudes in there like, yo, I ain't got nothing to lose. What, yeah, what can you, I got life. What can you do to me? I got that, life. Was, 
And that was the point. Once they locked us in the cell, that's when that came out like, okay, they want us to get involved. We're going to get involved then. You understand what I'm saying? Because then um, Lone Park went off, you know what I mean? And then uh, uh, um, Allen Wood, they threw a, a cocktail, a, 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 a white guy threw a, a, a cocktail, you know what I mean? With, with, with uh, what they call that, uh, magic shave, you know what I mean? And, um, and piss and, you know what I mean? It's a mother sitting in this black lady face and, you know, we're just crazy, man. But they sent all them up to ADX and that's how I wound up up there with them. But, you know, when they lost that thing, man, yo, just everything just went in an uproar once they locked the jail down because it was like, all right, you know what I mean? Now you're fighting. I mean, they used to come through, Chad, you know, they do a count. And could you imagine them doing count? And you got 20 police coming through with riot gear and helmets and billy clubs with the shield and everything to do a standard four o'clock count. You understand what I'm saying? Never seen nothing like that before. I mean, I've seen, you know, now, you know, they come to the shoe, they put them big things in front of them, they put boxes on the cells, and, you know, they come feed people that throw shit and stuff like that different ways. But, no, I mean, I know it, it was. It was but that was just for the, that was just a standard count, my Nick. Standard count. Let me ask you this. You know, you went to the ADX. How long were you in the ADX for? I was there uh, about four and a half years. I just interviewed John Powers. He's the guy that bit his fingers off over there, tattooed his whole body with a razor blade. He's the reason why they ended up getting the lawsuit eventually, right? Cut his Achilles tendons off. He drilled a hole in his head with a battery. What was it like to be locked in a cell for four and a half years, man? Oh, man. I mean, you know, like I said, I, I, I utilized that time, you know, with the programs they had on the TV. Because I had good brothers like Nathaniel Appleby that I mentioned, Owens L from Baltimore. You understand? What I'm saying, um, you know, uh, um, it, it, it was like, you know, they gave you, they, they they used to sell beads, Indian beads. You know what I mean? Those little little tiny little beads. They see they make the chains out of. I got a whole bunch of them in the room. I'll even show you some so you can put the pictures up. But they used to give us beads where you you you, you made chains from the beads. You know, they so they you know they gave them to us. You didn't have to buy them from the commissary. The rec department would come and give us beads just to occupy our mind to sit there with a needle and thread, taking ten thousand little beads to make one necklace so you can mail it home to your son and daughter because you couldn't get them nothing else. You know, they, they gave us yarn. We had to get you know, they gave us yarn with the thing and on the TV they showed you how to crochet. You know what I mean? They gave us little things to occupy our mind. So you sitting there for all that time and you crocheting, you're not sitting here thinking, man, I'm going to die in here. This is like this. So they knew what they was trying to do to help keep your mind occupied. But, you know, like, I'm going to give you one, Rambo. Rambo was Escobar's hitman. You know what I mean? I know Rambo from the streets, in, you know, in New York. Rambo used to just come to New York whenever it was a problem in New York and Escobar wanted something taken care of. That was his hitman. You better believe he was no joke. But Rambo, he must have had over 100 murders, man. But Rambo up in there and from being locked in the cell, he became a devout Christian. All he did was read the Bible. Everything out of his mouth became Christian verses. And he learned how to how to do the bead work. And you know, I told you like 10,000 beads to make a necklace. You know what I mean? This dude made a whole blind that would go in front of a door. You remember those beads when you walk in the door and the beads shake and yeah. go in? He made one of those out of little tiny little beads. They call them CB, uh, uh, E beads. They're so small that... You know, you could put maybe a thousand of them in your mouth, like this much is a thousand. <laughs> but but he had he had so much time and, and, and patience that he sat there taking one of those little beads at a time to make a whole big curtain. You know what I mean? To block up the thing so he could send it home to his family. But you know, the ones that didn't get into the crocheting, the bead work, you know what I mean, and things like that. Those are the ones that had too much idle time. And they went crazy. I seen this one dude in there, man. Every Friday, every Friday and Saturday night. Okay, during the week, he'll take his uniform. He put it because we had cement slab. Everything is cement in the cell. They, they, uh, he'll take his uniform. He'll lay it out on the, on the cement slab. His pants, his shirt, and he put his mattress on top of it. And he'll sleep on it for the whole week. On Friday, he take it out. He put it on, look like it's fully pressed. He button it up to the collar, and then he take his mattress. And he uh, rip his sheet up and he tied the mattress up on the bars. You understand what I'm saying? And he'll sit there and the whole night he'll beat this mattress like it was, you know, his woman. You understand? And he'll say, 
you know, big boo, how you come out and stay out this late? Well, I know you cheating on me. And he'll beat this mattress, wow. and you'll think he had a woman up there he was beating. You understand what I'm saying? And this is every Friday and Saturday night. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, so only good thing was, you know, because the cells is isolated, but when the police come through and they got to do count, they open up all the outside sliders because um, ADS got two doors. They got a sally port. They got a solid steel door, and they close that. That's what keep the sound out. Then when you go inside, then it got bars. You understand what I'm saying? So when the police come in, they stand in the sally port with the uh, with the electronic uh, billy clubs, so you can't reach your hand through there and do nothing to them. But when they open it, now the sound come out. So when they get ready to count, they bust all the doors. And um, when they open the doors, or now the sound comes out. And we listened to this dude beating this mattress like it's a woman, and he did this every day. He'll beat the mattress till he fall asleep, man. You understand what I'm saying? So I've seen him go crazy up in there. <clears throat> and, and, you know, people don't know that when you got someone that kicks the door all night or does that shit, it drives you crazy. You're like, damn, man. Like, man, when's this dude going to stop, right? Yeah. But but imagine listening to him cussing out a woman, calling her every degraded name that's born, and he's pounding on the mattress, and he's going off. And then the police now, they would leave the doors open after they count till they finish the whole tier. So you can't even get quiet with nothing. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, and then you thinking like, could that be me? Is is that going to be me? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. After watching this, it was madness, man. So you end up getting out of there four and a half years later. Where do they send you after that? Uh, that's why I went to Allenwood. And that's why I hooked up with Guy Fisher, met Guy Fisher, William Underwood, and you know what I mean? And, and uh, it's my man Harris L, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Guy Fisher's out. I think Underwood got out too, right? There was a lot of people pushing for him. He got out, right? Yeah, yeah, but they both got there. They both got out. I was there with both of them in um, in 99 when I got out of ADX, yeah. You know? I was with Guy Fisher in a couple of prisons. Park. I was with Guy Fisher in a couple of prisons. Uh, you know, hey, once upon a time, he was the king of Harlem, but he's really from the BX, right? Yeah, but, you know, uh, he was with Nicky Barnes over in Harlem. I mean, he, he official, official OG. Stood strong, went to trial in the whole nine. I mean, you know what I mean? Nicky told on him, and, you know, he, he, he held it down. You know what I mean? I mean, I said none of that is to brag about, but, I mean, my thing is, you know, when they caught me, you know, I got caught. I slipped. You know what I mean? I allowed them to do something for them to put their handcuffs on me. So I'm not going to go tell on Chad or Bob or Kenny to bring them in for anything, not even to, to free myself because I wouldn't be able to live with myself knowing that I took somebody else away from their family to put them in the misery that I went in when we all went in this together, even though, you know what I mean? Some people don't look at it that way. I'm just saying that's just the way I was raised. And, you know, that's where everybody speak on there's no code, there's no, there's no, there's men of honor. You understand what I'm saying? And you got to, you know, honor up to what you do. Big shout out to OG Daniel Dame Dash for the movie. They got honor up. But you know what I mean? Yeah, you got to honor up to what you do, my nigga. I mean, and, and, and it's not bragging about it. You know what I mean? It's just you got caught. You have to deal with your circumstances. You don't need to pull somebody else in the fire because you're in the fire. You understand what I'm saying? Because you got caught. I hear you. You know, I was with, you know, I was with some dudes, man, from around your time, probably. I was with Lou and Big Sandy, right? And I seen you. You were down there in Florida with Lou, I think, right, when he first got out. Yeah, Lou Sims, that's my brother. You know what I mean? That's family. You know, Lou Sims, Farris, you know what I mean? That, that's the lynch mom, you know? Let me ask you this. When you did get out, man, when it finally happened, you got out through compassionate release, right? Yeah. Was there a time, man, when you were sitting there and there like, damn, man, I ain't never going to get out. And then, you know, I mean, keep uh, it is what it is. The Trump administration passes, you know, the first step back. And they're talking about, hey, people can get out on compassionate release. Were you like, damn, man, this is my opportunity? No. Nah. It, 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 I never had that thought. I knew I was getting out. Let's get that straight. But when the compassionate release, you know, passed, I didn't think two craps about it because, like I said, I got 255 keys. I remember they, they, they when they first did the first um, Obama thing in 2010, they made it that you had to have 250 grams or less to get a cut. Remember, that's when they made it to 18 to 1. You understand what I'm saying? So I got 255 keys. I'm not. I'm not thinking I'm gonna get out on that. I was already fighting my case in a law library on um, a unanimity issue because they charged me with being a kingpin, a continual criminal enterprise, saying I had to have three drug violations. Now you know the law, so I'm gonna talk real fast so we can get past this phase. I got charged with being a kingpin. So continual criminal enterprise 
um, means that you got to have um, three drug violations. You know what I mean? That you continuously broke the law, and those are the continuing series. You got to have overacts. Excuse me? You got to have them three overacts. Exactly. They, they're predicate acts, yes. Right? So now, I was only charged with one drug charge in my life, and that was in my indictment for selling a half a key of crack or something like that in Virginia, when I ain't never sold nobody no half. If you ain't buying buy 20 keys for me, I'm not dealing with you. You know what I mean? But they brought all these people in there to lie and say that they bought a half a key from me here, nine ounces from me there. You know what I mean? And you know, when you go to trial with a big case like mine, they keep the witnesses out of the room. You understand what I'm saying? So the lead agent wasn't allowed in the room, neither was the other witnesses that was going to testify because the agent was going to testify. So after all these people said they bought nine ounces, they, they listen to how crazy this is. They charged me for selling 500 grams to one man, but they brought in a, 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 about, a, about 20, 30 men to say that they brought different amount of drugs from me. Nine ounces, a key, you know what I mean? One dude said three keys, but I was only charged with 500 grams. But they brought all these people in. But anyway, so when the lead agent got on the stand, they asked him, um, um, they asked him what was my role in the indictment. So he's telling them that I was at the top of the food chain. I'm in New York. I'm sending the drugs down to my brother. You know what I mean? And then my brother would disperse it to these guys down here. And he said, okay, but what did you need to do down here? We brought him from Harlem down to Virginia in Norfolk and, and, you know, Hampton Roads to take him to trial for this federal kingpin charge. And they said, oh, no, he just sent the drugs down. So my lawyer said to, um, so the judge said to the, um, to the uh, 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 agent when he was on the stand, he said, I mean, my lawyer asked him what was my role, and he just kept talking about me in New York. So my lawyer asked him, well, what did you need to do down here in Virginia? Because he's down here going to trial. You know what I mean? So what did he do in Virginia? And they said, uh, no, he didn't do anything. He just sent the drugs down. It was his drugs, so that's how he's linked to the conspiracy. It was his drugs that went down, but da, da, da. we had the mule see this and the mule see that and all of that. So the judge said, okay, so if I told you that we had 20 or 30 people in here to come in to say that, unique uh that they bought you know drugs from unique in virginia what would you say to that as the lead agent that gave the prosecutor you know the evidence for that you collected in the field as a field agent he said man they'll be a liar not one of these dudes in virginia could deal with unique unique so 20 keys at a time in new york you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that's why we brought him down here because he was too elusive in new york and had too much connections in new york you understand what i'm saying so the judge said so you telling me that Unique never sold no drugs down here in Virginia. And he said, no, he didn't. He gave it to his brother and his brother sold it. You know what I mean? So the judge told him, disregard everything that you hear dealing with Unique with drugs, being, selling drugs down here from those witnesses. By then it was too late. The jury done heard all this stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So now when he say disregard it, you know, when it was time to go to uh, uh, deliberation, it's already in their mind about this. But bottom line is, they acquitted me of selling drugs, like the judge said. So my lawyer asked for a mistrial right there. And the judge said, man, we've been, this shit been going on for two weeks. I'm not going to start all this over for that. Take it up on appeal. So I've been fighting that same issue for the whole 26 years I've been in prison that I didn't have the three predicates for a continuing series. You know what I mean? To violate the 848 Kingpin statute. And I even wanted in the Supreme Court. My, my name is in the Supreme Court on the Richardson versus United States, 143. Uh, um, too deep. You understand? That's me, the hall in there from Virginia, 126 F, um, 3D, page 136 to 131. I remember all this because I've been fighting it for years. Go ahead, big bro. Let me ask you this. So your case is out of Virginia, right? Yes. Do you know the dude from New York, Knowledge? Knowledge ended up with a couple life sentences. There was a death penalty case back probably around the time that you got arrested. I was in USP right. Lee with Knowledge. Richard, B I think his last name was Bullock. The name sounds familiar, but I can't picture it. I know him, though, but I can't picture it offhand. It you know, I was in Lee County, too. You know what I mean? Where you, were you in Lee County? I was there from 2003 to 2005. So you were there when I it was... I was in H Block, in the middle. I was in C Block years later, man. I'm, you're, a little, you're a little bit older than me, brother. But yeah. anyway... And I started this from, from early, you know? So, you know, let me ask you a couple more questions, right, about prison and... Who do you think, because I did a video, top five, and people got mad at me, right? I said the top five most dangerous gangs in federal prison or organizations, whatever. Who do you think is number one on that list, brother? The Black Hand, the Serenos. Same, that's the same thing I said, right? And a lot of people are like, oh, man, you're going to put the Bloods on there. I said, yeah, because I've been in prisons where the Bloods, there was only like 15 of them. 
Or I've been in prisons where there's only nine cribs. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes, man, might be, you know, they might be blood, whatever, but they're riding with the New York car. Listen to what you said. You said the most dangerous. You understand what I'm saying? I'm speaking from experience that I know. I don't know what prison anybody else was in. The prisons I was in, those Serenos was knocking police out like they was nothing. You know what I mean? You wasn't getting no bloods, crips, not even New Yorkers, so just letting it be known. You know, we respected the police to a degree, but if they violated us, then they fooled too. You understand what I'm saying? Bottom line, it don't matter what, what uniform or what you're wearing. If you disrespect a man, you're going to be checked. You understand what I'm saying? But Serenos, you know, was more on a was more on a no tolerance for them. Anything they did, they treated them as if they was an inmate. You know what I mean? Where we were kind of, you know what I mean? Let it ride. But yo, know, listen, man, I was in Atwater, man. That's why I do a lot of stories at my YouTube channel, Unique Mega Audio, about Atwater. When I was in Atwater, I used to tell my celly every day they used to lock it down. I tell my celly, yo, nobody would never believe what we going through, man. No, but listen, they locked us down in, 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 that's where they killed the cop at. You understand what I'm saying? I did a video on it, you know, you, YouTube might try to have a problem with it, but I did a video when they killed the cop. I mean, dude stabbed the cop one, his, his man held him down, he stabbed him 36 times. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you know, that, that wasn't the Serenos, that was, you know, somebody else that did that. But, the Islanders, but we'll say the Islanders. Yeah, but I, like I, said, I don't say names. I don't, I don't, I just tell my stories. I do mine's different. You know, like I said, cause I'm still in touch with a lot of these brothers, you know what I mean? Um, but I don't say names, but people that was there know. You know what I mean? If, if you wasn't there, you don't need to know. You know what I mean? Unless the person that was there tell you. That's how I deal with it. Like I said, I'm 100 that way. You know, that's why when I met you and we talked, what's the first thing I asked you? Are you hot? You understand what I'm saying? Period. I mean, you know, and, and you know, I know out here so everybody understands, you know, uh, and, and, and he's not hot for the record, you know. That's what he responded back to me. So I'm not saying that. I'm just giving y'all the jewels, you know, on prison life. But, you know, when you meet somebody, that's the first thing you want to know, if they're hot. Because that lets you know if you can deal with them or not. Because now you got to watch what they say. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, that Atwater man was just, it's a whole nother animal, man. I don't know how the hell, you know what I mean? We survived it and the people is still surviving it. That that was that joint dead, man. I mean, like I said, yo, Atwater, you ever been to Atwater? Never been to Atwater. Okay, well, Atwater is built like Coleman and all these new prisons. You know what I mean? You know, Beaumont built like Lee County, but this built like 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 Coleman. Uh, um, what's that other one? Colorado. You know what I mean? But they don't have no grass on the compound. It's all red dirt because it gets 120 degrees out there, and that's why I'm so black. Even I've been black. I, I'll go out in the sun and work out. You know what I mean? I go drink me a gallon of water from like six o'clock in the morning to the ten o'clock count. After the ten o'clock count, I go work out at twelve thirty. You know what I mean? But I got all the water in me, and that's like my antifreeze, my cooling. You understand what I'm saying? So we go out there, we work out in that sun. You understand? But it's so hot that the ground is red. There's no water on the compound because it, you know what I mean? It's in the middle of the desert. You know what I mean? That's in the desert. So. It, Everywhere you look is dirt. So you feel like you're on the moon. You understand what I'm saying? Like you, you're not even on earth. You know what I mean? So your, your mind transformed. I'm going to do a couple of these videos on my YouTube channel, you know, over at Unique Make Audio to really break it down. But I'm going to give you one here. I'm going to bless you with this one here. You know what I mean? Over in, um, they had no dirt. They had no grass on the compound. It was always a stabbing. Inmates on inmates, inmates on police. It was always violence and blood. I mean, three times a day, the deuces go off. That's where they hit the little button because all the police come running all that. But it was nothing but violence, man. Nothing but violence in this joint. And Dublin, the um, the central or the office for that area in California, they wrote him a letter and said, yo, what is going on? It's too much violence in that one jail. You know what I mean? Y'all need to take it. Y'all need to, you know, figure out the problem or somebody's going to wind up getting killed. You understand what I'm saying? And they ignored that letter. All this is in the report after the, the correction officer got killed. You understand? So he said somebody's going to get killed. They ignored it. By them ignoring it, you know what I mean? The uh, officer got killed. Now they locked us down for six months. Could you imagine them not opening the doors? They didn't open the doors. I didn't feel no water on my back except for what I poured with a cup down my back to wash up. You understand? 
from 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 June to December. From June to December. Rough life, you man. You understand what I'm saying? Rough life. They didn't give us no toilet paper. They didn't give us no soap. Did you run out they of socks? No deodorant, no toothpaste. We couldn't buy nothing. When they locked that door, whatever you had in the cell is all you had till they decided to open it because y'all had to go on to kill a correction officer. And they got away with that. If that's not cruel and humane treatment. What was it like, man, once you guys came out? You know, the cop gets killed. Everybody's pissed off. Are the cops treating you guys like shit once you come out? Listen, man, by the time we came out, the first thing they did, that's why I, I don't care who get mad. I taught my facts from my experience, from what I've experienced and what I've witnessed. When we was locked down for that six months, they went and they got rid of all them Serenos, bro. You know what I mean? They got rid of all of them, you know, because those were the ones that had most of the violence on police. You know what I mean? Then they got rid of all the guys that had the most violence and things like that and tried to weed it out to have the people that wasn't involved in a lot of that, that was just surviving, that knew how to wiggle through the bull. But when we came out to go to the kitchen, right? Like the, when they finally let us go to the child hall, right? They had, they had like, they had like maybe about like, like, like 10 case managers from all over the country, all over the BOP that flew in, 10 um, um, unit managers, you know, like 10 counselors, you know what I mean? About 300 police, you know what I mean? They had like four wardens, five wardens, five, six AWs. They brought in all of these people from all the different prisons to come in and review, you know, the records, the videotapes for the last, you know, two years to see what collapsed, why an inmate went to the extreme of killing a correction officer. You understand what I'm saying? So when you're walking out of tear, when you're walking out of catwalk to go to the kitchen, you get searched 20 times by the time you get up there. And if you say anything, like, man, he just searched me back there, they locking you up because it was a no tolerance. You understand? So they had all these police trying to restructure and put, you know what I mean, and put some type of structure into their program. But they wind up firing all of them, man. I know that one dude asked, if he could go to the East Coast because he's been clean for 18 months. You know, 18 months, you get transferred. They told him, no, give me another six months. He gave him six months. You know what I mean? And I got 24 months. He said, okay, look, I just gave you 24 months. Can I go back to the East Coast? You know what I mean? And he's like, nah. You know what I mean? Give us another six months. He gave him another six months. After that, when he came back, he said, look, you asked me to give you three extra six months. I don't gave you all of this. You still ain't trying to transfer me. What I got to do to get transferred back to the East Coast so I can see my family and kids, man? They say the only way to get there is if you kill somebody. You know what I mean? You got to go from the shoot. This is what the this is what the administration was telling you when you asked it to get transferred. You only get transferred out of Atwater on the disciplinary because Atwater is the last stop on the West Coast. They didn't. The police don't even want to work there. That's in the desert, way at the other end of the damn country. You understand what I'm saying? But nobody wanted to work there. So when they get an inmate in there that's doing good and trying to leave for doing good. They're not going to let him leave because they let him leave. God knows what they're going to get to come in and take his place. You understand? This is so the dude got fed up. Dude got <clears throat> fed up, knocked out the police, took his cigarettes and his walkie talkie, took the sheet, covered up the, um, the, the police officer window and called him on the walkie talkie and said, back the bus up. I'm ready to go back to the East Coast because anywhere you send me is going to be the East Coast. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. and, and that's when they started putting the bars in the, um, in the police stations. You know what I mean? Because remember when they didn't have the bars in the police stations? It was just glass. When you say the police station, some of these people might not know what you're talking about. You're talking about, the, we'll call it police station, the office. It used to just be plexiglass. Yeah, now there's bars. That way you can get in there and lock the door and hopefully be safe until, you know, someone can get there to help you, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? Because dude brought them up in there and put the sheet up over there and told them, back the bus up. But these are the extremes you had to go through to get out of Atwater, man. I mean, this drunk was the worst. You know what I mean? The worst. I mean, listen, can you imagine not having toilet paper for six months and you got to use your wash rag? You know what I mean? That when you when you defecate, you got to wipe yourself with your wash rag. That's why I said earlier, did you run out of socks? I'm just playing, oh, bro. Man. I'm just playing. Go ahead. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm you just know? messing. I'm just messing with you, man. Let's talk about this, right? You end up getting out of jail 26 years. Where do you get released from? I got released from Victorville. You know, out in California again, another gang band line, and that's another joint there. That joint, 
Oh my God, yo, them California jails, man. Victorville and Atwater. The first one was Lump Park, but they got rid of all of us out of Lump Park when they had that big riot and M unit. You understand what I'm saying? And they made it into what they call the FCI. But they sent all the guys that was that was wilding in Lump Park up to Victorville. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, you know, they always having something up there, man. I mean. You know, but that's where I got released from. My first day there, my first day there was like, y'all could look it up. Like I said, I speak facts. My first day there was like August 18th, um, like August 2018. Uh, um, uh, a white dude came there that was hot. And when you go through Victorville, they tell you straight up, we don't do all of that screening and all that. If you told on somebody, you got to deal with it when they put your ass out there in that yard. If you ain't got no blood, you're not going to our hole because they getting stabbed up a mile a minute. So we're not going to put you in no PC. We don't do PC in um, Atwater. I mean, Victorville. This is what they tell you. You know what I mean? And they tell you that in Victorville. That's how the, the dude got on the compound to kill the cop because he wasn't supposed to be there. He was in diesel therapy. You know what I mean? But, you know, so they let a white dude out there and he goes out and figure he could stand up under the tower and be safe. But by the time he went in the unit, when he, for that night when we all got off the bus, you know, dudes, you know, he talking to dudes, they knew him. So the next morning when they went out there, because they knew he was hot, they went and stabbed him up under the tower. While they stabbing him up, while they stabbing him up, the police up there, he's shooting and they had live rounds in there. We talking about 2018, they got live rounds in the tower out there in Victorville. They're not playing. So dude stabbing a dude and the dude that was getting stabbed, you know what I mean, that, that they was running off the compound. You know, it's a white guy and a white guy cleaning their car, you know, as they call it. You know what I mean? Um, the dude rolled over and got on top, the one that was getting stabbed, that he was trying to get rid of. And the police shot him and shot his leg off, man. And I'm sitting right there in the yard my first day at Victorville. Leg off, man, down, leg off. So, you know, I want to talk a little bit before we get ready to go about what it was like, though, man. When you get back in New York, what's it like, man? Your first day, are you like, did you go to New York right away? No, no, I didn't go to New York for about maybe four or five months, you know, after I got out. But when I went to New York, it was just crazy. I seen the condition that it was in, and that's when I decided to do my YouTube to try and talk to the youth to let them know the experiences that I've experienced that I'm sharing with you now to let them know that. Because, you know, you know, like 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 I said, like Lou Sims, Farris, you know, uh, Peter Shue, you know what I mean? Kevin Childs. You know what I mean? I'm saying that, you know, the brothers that was in jail. You know what I mean? D-Nice from Brooklyn. You understand what I'm saying? Prince from the Supreme Team. Rest in peace to C from the Supreme Team. You know, uh, 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 um, Supreme. I mean, they look up to us because we're legendary in New York. Because we put it down during that era. So I wasn't the only one. But these are the men. But when I come out, they all so happy and shocked to see me there that they looking up to me and looking like oh you did that you, you, you stood 10 toes down you didn't do you didn't tell on nobody you this and that man i man, you beat the family like hold up let's get this right that was nothing easy about that 26 years that i did you know what i mean and i don't get no props i don't want no props i don't want no congratulations you know what i mean for standing 10 toes down and not telling you understand what i'm saying i don't i don't i don't get that i don't want that i don't need that i don't deserve that that was just something that had to be done because those are the rules. You understand what I'm saying? Period. And just like a, 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 a father take care of his child, you don't say, man, congratulations, you're a good father. No, that's what you're supposed to do because you are a father. You understand? So you a criminal, like I was a criminal and I was on the street breaking the law. When I broke the law and shit hit the fan and I got caught, I had no choice but to shut the fuck up. I ain't got the shirt. I, I got the, the, the clothing line, the shut the fuck up line, the Fifth Amendment. You have the right to remain solid. So my motto is, I'm telling the youngins, don't go get involved in the street. It wasn't nothing nice. I made it to the top of the food chain. And I'm telling you that, you know, I made it all the way to hell. I survived hell. But at the end of the day, all that shit wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. So don't put yourself in that position to have to make the choice to stand 10 toes down and tell and not tell and all that. And if you feel you are tough enough to do that, I'm going to get out your way. You do you, but I'm telling you what the rules are. So you can't say no one never told you the rules. The rules is you get caught, you shut up. You know when you stole that goddamn gum out that store when you was 5, 7, 10 or whatever, and you were doing that. And if your man got caught, you knew you got mad if he told on you. You understand what I'm saying? And you know, go ahead, big bro. No, go ahead. I'm listening. You're dropping a jewel for the people, man. Go ahead. 
You know what I mean? What I'm saying, these are things that, these are rules and, and codes, as they want to call it now, to play these manipulation word games that was given to us from child. You you, you told that your sister broke that lamp in the house, in, in my household and in my neighborhoods that I was raised in. You, you know, you tell that your, your mother come home and see the lamp broken and you say, Kenny did it. You understand what I'm saying? Mother say, stop telling on your brother. <laughs> we learned these things from back then, man. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you get out on the street and you want to do decide to steal a bicycle. You don't make, you don't have to say, yo, you know, if we get caught, you know what I mean? You, you know, we ain't going to tell on each other because you know not to tell on each other because you know that you're breaking the law and you know you wouldn't want the next man to tell on you. But now they're playing, you know, straddling the fence and making excuses. And, and for the record, you know, I, I I don't agree with none of that. Like I always say, but whatever a man do, as long as he's comfortable with himself and can live with himself, I'm cool with it. Just be honest enough to admit that, yeah, I told and I will tell and I'll continue to tell. I can't fight you for that. You being a man, stand on who you are. And that's what it is. That way I have the choice if I want to deal with you or not. But don't tell me that I'm a stand up man. If something happened, I'm going to hold you down. And Or even after you tell, you know what I mean? You say, nah, I didn't tell him. You got a million excuses. No, my brother. If you told, you told, admit that. So we know what we're dealing with, then we decide if we want to deal with you on any level or not. You understand? And if a man can admit what he did, I'm cool. Right now, there was going off. Let's take a prime example. Jay-Z with um the, the, the Perez girl. You know what I mean? They said she told she was informing all that. All right, cool. But then now they say, oh, Jay-Z hired her and she's a rat, this and that. Jay-Z made a billion dollars. So you tell me that if you got a billion dollar company and they and they tell you that oh this person told you're gonna turn around and say you fired when you got a billion dollar legal company everybody's everybody you working with around you nowadays in the streets it would, would either tell or got the potential to tell but that don't mean that you're gonna invite them over your house for milk and cookies or for dinner you understand what I'm saying? You keep your distance, you still have to deal with them. You know that you know that they, 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 there's a, a dog on the street. You know what I mean? If that if you go bother that dog or go in the yard with that dog and he bites you or he shit on your foot, you know what I mean? That's what a dog do. You can't get mad because you went around him. So if you know a dude is a rat and you go around him and then he do something to you, you know what I mean? You can't get mad because you know what it is. It's the ones that, you know what I mean, that play snake and try and say, nah, I ain't tell, I, I'm this, I'm that. You know what I mean? And then you go around them, and then now they sting you. Damn, dog. Wait, so really, do unique. I mean, at the end of the day, man, the teachable moment is this, right? Man, stay out the streets, man, because it's not the place to be. That's what I'm telling you. And that's my motto. That's why I tell the story so they understand what me and you, Chad, been through, that it, it wasn't worth it. We're telling them it wasn't worth it. So I'm not promoting don't snitch. I'm not promoting none of that. I'm just letting you know don't get involved in the street so you don't have to be in a position to have to tell. Because nine times out of ten, don't go tell. Well, listen, man, I'm gonna get ready to uh I'm gonna get ready to close the show. We've been rocking for like an hour, right? But I want people to go check out your YouTube channel, man. Tell them where they can find it. I'm gonna put it up in the link. But tell the people, man, where they can find you at. Okay, I'm, I'm at Unique Mecca Audio on Instagram and YouTube. You know what I mean? And I got a website, a ruin Harlem. Um, dot com. That's where you go buy my book. I got the audio book. You know what I mean? And just so you understand, I, I mean, I might come off a little aggressive because that's the way I was raised. But like I said, I went into jail. I couldn't read or write. So I want to leave you all with this. I couldn't read or write when I went into prison. But when I came out that prison, I became a certified cook, a certified electrician, certified plumber, certified HVAC and refrigeration specialist, certified mechanic, Certified culinary arts cook with my serve safe from the state of Florida. You understand what I'm saying? And, and I got 3,500 hours of psychological training to find out why I was twisted so I could reach out to the youth today. You understand what I'm saying? I, I was a suicide um, companion. You know what I mean? Um, suicide prevention, you know, where, you know, somebody suicidal, they sent us to go talk to them and, and you know what I mean? And, and, you know, to help them off the ledge because they know we can deal with them. But I say all that to say that none of that that I did in the past supersedes who I am today and what I'm trying to give to you, the viewers, today with my brother Chad. That's what's up, man. You kind of sound like that dude from back in the day on a living color. I got 15 job, man. I'm the police, man, the fireman. Yeah, but you Remember? know, man, Jamaica, so, you know, that's why I'm going to learn so much education so we can pick the 15 job number one. I'm be a boss. I'm just playing with you, Unique, man. Listen, man, I definitely appreciate you coming on, man. 
tell people to check out that book. I'm sure some of the viewers are going to definitely purchase the book. I'm going to buy your book, man, and I'm going to read it. I'm not just saying I'm going to buy it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it, and I'm going to read it, man. It's on Amazon, man. I got four and a half stars on Amazon, man. The joint is fire. That's what's up. So, look, man, I'm going to close the show. Tell people, man, check Unique out. Blood on the Razor Wire TV. If you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share the video, and make sure you leave a comment. With respect, until right. tomorrow, Salute. It's a pleasure, out. family.